What's up? What's up? Sorry about that. That's just a crazy day, but don't want to miss this one. It's all good. Let me uh, um, let me make sure my math here is correct. You get, you get the right numbers? I always have to double check because I'm dumb. My shit is insane, of course. It would have been way more insane had one thing not happened. Yeah. And you would have just destroyed me on it. <laughs> all right. I'm also going to go through uh, uh, the dunk contest, the rising stars. Oh, should I pull all those guys up? I'm not. No, really I got it. I got up. it for you. Um, if you have any thoughts, I mean, I don't know if you'll have any thoughts, but. Uh, I mean, I'm always ready to jabber, jibber, jabber. Yeah. Yeah. I figured. Um, if you want to look at the. Uh, the player, if you here, I'm gonna share this link with you. I don't know if I did this correct as far as uh, positions. I don't okay? think it matters. Apparently, okay. it doesn't matter as, as much anymore. Zach Lowe told us it didn't matter. So he is God now, right? How about how about Danny Larue having a wife? Yeah, I think I need that too. Wow. I just sent you a list of all the sophomore players. If, you, if it's something just, I like looking at that to figure out who my deep cut snubs could be. That's not bad. <clears throat> not uh, do, you bad. Talk, do you want to talk about breakfast? Do you have a breakfast? Um, it's pathetic. Well, we can just do it quick. It's fine. Are right, you ready? I got to actually get going. Uh, one second. Injuries kind of screwed me up this year. <clears throat> oh, man. I want to cut someone off of my hospital team so badly, but I can't. Maybe we'll just talk about it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, and welcome to Fast Break breakfast nba podcast my name is keith hmm, am i doing a last drop um to be determined am i'm here I right the last drop <laughs> i'm here right now with john burr john burr on a thursday we are going to talk some all-star reserves we did not do it on the main show we enjoy expressing our opinion it's one of those perfunctory tasks of being an nba podcast what's the point of having your own nba podcast if you're not going to express your opinions on uh, who the all-star reserve should be i think chuck and i got left off of this show once maybe last year or two years ago you did Could it with been. like duffer or something numerous shows yeah yeah well and, like it's Dave the only time i've ever been like i'm pissed I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm super pissed. Like I, I, I wanted to do this. Dave DeFore and I used to do a preseason all-star pick every year, but honestly, mm -hmm. I can't remember anything that's happened in the past three seasons. <laughs> also, so we're going to talk all-star reserves. We're going to talk about the dunk contest nominees. We're also going to talk about the rising stars challenge. Speaking of things I can't remember, here's just a, a, a quick quiz for you, John. Yes. True or false. There was a Rising Stars Challenge game last year. False. Yeah, well done. I feel like if that was posed I'm a, to see, me, I'm like an all star obsessive. Yeah, like, I, I always watch all that. I used to watch like the the celebrity game. I like, never. I'm, I'm very aware of. Like, I watched the one with Robert Para and maybe uh, one of the ones that the Arcade Fire uh, dominated. It's kind and, of. I was about to say it's kind of been ruined by the uh, the onset of. Win Butler, and then someone who's like apparently like in the president was in the presidential cabinet, just just owning people for like four years in a row. Well, I think there probably there probably was some tension between Win Butler trying to um, talk to the guy in the presidential cabinet and, <laughs> <Yeah>. and complain. <laughs> I remember his speech got cut off one year. Yeah, they pulled, they pulled the plug that is true. <laughs> on his speech. Oh, but anyway, I guess before we dive into everything, it, I guess would be rude. We can do breakfast since you're here. Have you had a breakfast uh, today? I had a cookie for breakfast. Oh, man. It was, it was pretty gross. My it was, own heart. It was like I was in one of those desperate situations where I just had to eat something. And we had like a business associate send us a bunch of milk bar stuff. You ever heard oh, of milk bar? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Really like unbelievably disgusting. Like, oh, you didn't like it? 
so such an overwhelming like confetti esque cornucopia of sh- of confections, just so sugary as to make you sick. Like well, can if, feel if your you enjoyed, blood turning to sludge. If you enjoyed a critically acclaimed, um, overwhelmingly possible. Uh, popular thing i'd feel concerned about you so but that's in my world like i want to like like momofoku and i want to eat yeah. that good stuff like i yeah. wanted to like this but this was like beyond decadence like the one I, thing I, I, this so, is one where I, i'm really curious if you would like it like so I, I i don't think i've had one of their cookies i've had one of their uh i got one of their milkshakes from mm-hmm. the uh, the cosmopolitan in uh las vegas they they have right. the milk bar the milk there and i i got like a like a I want to say it was like the because their big thing is they have the cereal, bre- milk? cereal milk. It was like so I got like a Un- cereal profoundly disgusting. Yeah, I got a cereal milk milkshake, I want to say. And it was like, meh, yeah, yeah, it was I'm, fine. I mean, it it's was, a milkshake. You can't mess up a milkshake. Basically, I feel but- like that's what it tastes like. What a hummingbird gets out of a hummingbird feeder. <laughs> like, that's what I, I had. It and I was like, yeah. oh, am I? I will say who, you know, there is the, there's person. some there's some place in the, the the newer parts of Nashville that I don't I don't venture very much. Where I did get like a giant twelve dollar milkshake that wasn't even alcoholic. It was just a twelve dollar milkshake, just for the sake of being a milkshake. And I was like, "This is fine. This felt like it was worth twelve dollars." And I, I know I was pretty excited about it. Just uh, living I, on air. Sorry. Um, <laughs> my breakfast was somewhat similar. I had some animal crackers. My Ooh. wife got the kids animal crackers. I have not had animal crackers. I'll tell you. I can remember specifically Detective last time Tosky I had them. over here. I when I was in college, when I was at Florida State. All I would do, I'd go to Sam's Club and I'd buy the uh, I don't, it was like four feet tall. I don't know how many pounds it's like it was. shaped like an animal kind of. Yeah, yeah. It, no, no, it was like four. It was like it was like a like plastic t- tub. It was yeah. 10 pounds of animal crackers and it cost something like three dollars. And I was like, I can I, I, this will feed me for a week. <laughs> and uh, and I, I basically that was sustenance. I was just that, eating animal crackers. That was the equivalent of like the proverb of teach a man to fish. <laughs> Teach a man to go to Costco. You can feed yeah. everyone. Yeah. I, I, animal crackers. That's a really underrated quality snack. Uh, it was. It was pretty good. I was, that's, I, see, I, that's a that's an appropriate level of sweetness. Yeah, not not very sweet. Uh, you could trick yourself into it being like a, a sustenance, like I did. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm telling you, that first bite, it took me back 20 years, and I was like, wow, it's college. I, this was college dorm room. I do uh, feel like your best self is essentially Anthony Edwards from Zodiac. So <laughs> like endlessly dreaming of one day tasting sushi. Like I think yeah. so I, I think this works. All right. So let's start here. Time to get to business. Yeah, let's get down to, to business. The dunk mm-hmm. contest contestants were announced. I I only know one, Jalen Green. I Very. legit thought this was this report was a joke. I thought it was one of our sackball sports people give, giving us a fake <laughs> news report. Apparently, it literally is Cole Anthony, Jalen Green, Juan Toscano Anderson, and Obi Toppin. Wow, that's wild. Now, did you hear that? Was this now? Was this a joke? I may have gotten chucked here. Like Enos Cantor, Freedom Cantor was in the running and then was not at then out. I don't know. That's probably fake news. Okay, um, that felt fakeish. Although I do know Fox News did put out a fake NBA report. They got got. Um, yeah, my balls X. Yeah, I yeah, they they got got. Um, no, I mean, I, other than Juan Toscano think, saw, Anderson, who doesn't dunk in game, I saw I get all these it. people talking about Juan Toscano Anderson, and I was like, everybody got duped, everybody got <laughs> duped by a fake report. And it turns out that is the actual, um, who's it's Jalen Green's gonna win, right? He's gotta win, Obi. Like, Obi Toppin's a great dunker, he's got the he's got the height disadvantage, though. It's hard to win as a, as a tall guy. Um, is uh, is Jalen Green's shooting efficiency so poor that he's gonna miss too many dunks? He could. You could pull a Birdman, a Stroma <laughs> yeah. Swift. Watch him fly. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a mess. Anyway, uh, the Rising Stars game. There is going to be a Rising Stars game this year. Um, they went back to rookies versus sophomores. Although the details of the rules, there's no gonna more be four Faku. T- no more there's Faku. Gonna four, there's going to be four teams, and I don't understand the rules, but they at least named rookie sophomore uh, rosters, and they're basically right. Like there's there's not a huge. Um, We'll be Things the judge of that, about. Keith. Well, I will say, so the rookies, pretty straightforward. Scotty Barnes, Cade Cunningham, uh, Ayo Desunmu, Chris Duarte, Josh Giddy, Jalen Green, Herbert Jones, Davion Mitchell, Evan Mobley, Shingun, Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner. Any name on there um, that, that got omitted? Anyone you're thinking of as far as the rookies? Because I... Um, Santi Aldama? Yeah, I think they got it right. I mean... <laughs> yeah. I, I think, think I so uh, Kuminga <laughs> has been kind of awesome recently. Uh, on Tuesday night, he was dominating. A little too late. 
And a little bit too late. Yeah, a little bit, a little too late there. Like who Although, else? Gonna, honest, honestly, you could, you could, you could squeeze him on and take. There's people you could take. Who? Off but who would you take off? The only. I get you one Shingun, yeah, yeah. Shingun is the only name you take off. I mean, Shingun is it's like a Twitter meme, but like Kuminga's probably already better. They than know them. they know what they're doing. They had to balance yeah. the the maybe international viewers of Shingun versus the number of extra Bay Area viewers if they threw in Kuminga. You're not gonna so, you're not so, gonna go to. So this team uh, this team is about to lose as badly as a team has ever lost, right? I don't know because I believe <laughs> in a lot of these guys. I I mean, okay, uh, an Evan Mobley. Oh yeah, Evan Mobley alone. Court, that's just yeah. that's winning basketball. Kate Cutting yeah. has been incredible. You're right. You're, you're, you're right. Uh, the last e- month. Evan Mobley is like better than anyone else. I mean, Franz this, yeah. Wagner is <laughs> honestly really good. Uh, Giddy's good. Like this is actually one where I like. I wish these two rosters were just playing legitimately because I feel like mm-hmm. it'd be a very interesting game. The sophomore team. Yeah. And by the way, um, you have Nuggets fans mad at you not going to bat for Bones Island. I I, I wasn't going to do it. No. Um, I can't. Oh, also, I've, I've picked him up in fantasy too many times for him to have two points for me to ever. Since Chuck is here, he 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 he'd be upset if we didn't say uh, Yurt Savin got screwed. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, no, he I'm was not averaging like 16 and a half rebounds. Zaire Zaire Williams, Austin Reeves, Jeremiah Robinson, Earl, uh, Brandon Boston, uh, Kessler Edwards. I, I said all your names now, but no, uh, I think they got the rookies right. The sophomores, they basically got it right, with one huge exception. Let's hear it. Here's what, the, well, here's, here's what they did with the sophomore roster. Okay. The sophomore roster is literally the top 11 second-year players in minutes per game. Okay. And then Precious Achua. That's wrong. I don't know how Precious Achua That's got wrong. the scene. It doesn't make sense. Like So it's uh, Cole Anthony, LaMelo Ball, Desmond Bain, Sadiq Bey, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Maxey, Jaden McDaniels, Isaac Okoro, Isaiah Stewart, Jay Sean Tate, and okay. Precious Atua. If they didn't um, get my Jay Sean Tate, I was going to be very upset. I'm I also ready. To, I'm ready to make a case for Chumo Kiki. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So, I think Chumo Kiki, who we both love because of probably fantasy basketball reasons. <laughs> yes. Anytime correct. a player gets like two steals, two blocks a game, he's going to be rostered uh, on our fantasy basketball teams. And he's been fun. I, maybe he's a little bit too little too late where I feel like his, mm-hmm. his, his strong play. Um, I think, uh, like, I would take him over Isaac Okoro, not to mention. Yes. Um, I, I, I'd take Onyeka Kongwu over, like, three of these guys. So, Onkongwu has only played 18 games this season, and maybe that worked against him. Onkongwu is definitely me there. Yeah. better than a lot mm-hmm. of these guys, but maybe too little too late. I think Okoro makes it because it saves him on, on plane fare. Iris Halliburton is on the team, right? Yeah, Halliburton's there. Like... The, the obvious ones are definitely going to be there. And this is a pretty, could be a pretty awesome squad. I mean, LaMelo Ball mm-hmm. with Bain, Edwards, Halliburton, you need a big. And that's where, you know, I guess this team doesn't really have any good bigs. That's why I'd rather have it in Kongu over Achua. It makes what it about um, Achua made it just because he's, he's a center. Did you say Devin Vassell? No, Devin Vassell, I think, is the yeah. biggest snub, honestly, because yeah. beyond. Like on Kong was probably a better player, uh, maybe in a vacuum, but but well, Vassell's actually been playing all year and he's pretty solid. There's kind of a like a Spurs led conspiracy to not play him as much as he should. <laughs> so perhaps perhaps this is just pop winning again. Yeah, I would definitely I would definitely take Vass Vassell over. I'd I'd rank him ahead of Isaiah Stewart and ahead of Isaac Okoro. Honestly, I'm like here. here. Isaiah Stewart's numbers don't show up, but man, he's such a dog, though. Yeah, like well, he's such a high high effort, you know, disturber. On the- I'm too I'm too biased because this is a player I love. So right. if you were if you were selecting again, okay. based on their merits of their play this season, uh, would you have Vassal or uh, uh, Jaden McDaniel's? I think it's close. I really like, really like Jaden McDaniel's, but Jared Vanderbilt has rendered him obsolete. Yeah, and and I, so I feel like Vassal or Vassell. How do you say it? Vassell? I don't even know. I I just realized as we've been talking back and forth. I just like to call him not, Lord not, of the Vassals. Not, not even possible. Uh, I, I guess I'd give I was it about to say his name, but but I do. I like Jamie Daniels a lot, and I've been really surprised that uh, every time he does start, his numbers are insane. His yeah. stocks numbers are I'm a, wild. I'm a bit. I'm I mean, a big fan of his game, but I I think they, again the league pretty much got this right. I think the main ones are Devin Vassell. I feel like it's Vassell. That feels right. Uh, Devin Vassell. Certainly, Kongu, certainly more upset. aesthetically pleasing to everybody, the everybody else. They basically good job. And then uh, they have some very complex rules for how the game's actually going to go, which I'm sure we will enjoy in the moment. Uh, just right now, I'm not bothering uh, to read all those 
and try to figure it out myself. But let's do the All Star teams. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> All Star teams feel like they feel kind of tough. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a wrench thrown in it with, with the the surprise Wiggins announcement in, in the West. Factored um, into which, factored into my uh, which conference? My selection. Which conference would you like to start with, John? As we try to name who we think the seven reserves in each conference should be. I feel like my Western team is less humiliating for me, so why don't we start there? Okay, so we'll start in the Western Conference, where obviously already named the starters: Steph Curry, John Morant in the backcourt, in the front court is LeBron James, Nikola Jokic, and Andrew Wiggins. So <laughs> let's fill out your roster, John. You just want to. I mean, I assume I was going to say, I assume we have a lot similar, but I feel like one, there are uh, I'm a, certain, a lot of legitimate. I'm certain of here. three differences. I'm certain. And of three also, I was going to say, I know you like to go off the beaten path. Um, I'm just so, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you have, all right, let, let me guess. Let, let me do this by saying um, you have Chris Paul on yours. Yes. Yeah. So you have Chris Paul and you have Devin Booker. Yes. Okay. So we're the same there. I, I, I wow. Like See, I thought, so I did not think you'd have different Booker, but no, it's a and, bit. And I really no, wanted to take him off, but his uh, stats this year are just outrageous. Like he doesn't even turn the ball over anymore. Like it's just well, a nightmare. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just reward teams for winning necessarily. Mm-hmm. But the Suns are running away with the one seed in the entire NBA. I, and, and I, and, and I don't they're, know. They're who, both so good. I no longer know who is better. I, I've always been like Chris Paul truth, or even though I've, and, and I also despise both of these players. And I've always been like, Chris Paul's the best player in the Suns. I don't know anymore. Yeah. All uh, right. And they're totally fine with either. So we, so we, we have that in common. So okay. that, that seems pretty easy. I also think everyone is putting in Rudy Gobert. And I think that's, yes. that makes a ton of sense. It's, right. It'd be weird to I admit, think this is a good way to do it. Uh, to, to, to admit to Rudy, Rudy Gobert. So w- once we get there, I think I, based I think on we, lot, we both no, have I, Carl Anthony Towns. Okay, so I do have Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so, all right, so we have Towns. Now, here's one. Uh, I, I kind of cheated on the positions. Zach Lowe told us apparently that the NBA uh, is a little loose. You can make some arguments because it, it, it's so regimented with right. the whatever. If you're listed as a guard, you're a guard. But I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to include Luka Doncic as, as a forward on my, on my, on my, I also did on this. my reserves. So you have, so you have Luca. So this is well. very dull. This is <laughs> not dull. This is this is making uh, this is laying out the pieces of bread before we build the interesting sandwich. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I guess. Um, so yeah. So you have Cat. I have Cat. Doncic. Doncic. So that means we only have two players left, and now this is where I think you just go you go any number of directions. So who are your final two players? Dejounte Murray. All right. That's that's that's, that's like five out of ten hipster for you. Yeah, I wanted to put SGA until he, he's dead, so he's not. He's not. He's not going to be back till after the break. Yeah, Jaron ja- Jaron Jackson Jr. Oh my god! <laughs> I know you. I know you're just pandering. I know you're pandering. Do you want me to? Oh, do, I believe do it. Do, do you want me to do believe, an ad read right now? I believe, go for it. Baby. Do you want me to do? <laughs> want me to do? Uh, Transformative go to, defensive go to GrindCityMedia.com for the most comprehensive Grizzlies coverage. Home and away, Grind City Media is there. Plus, get your local regional sports fix all in one spot for the best Grizzlies coverage. GrindCityMedia.com. Also, follow them uh, on Twitter at Grind City Media. Okay, if I can put with no questions asked and argue Draymond Green starter in the West, I can argue. No questions asked. Jaron Jackson Jr. Reserve in the West. That's my. I know that his offensive numbers and efficiency can be painful at times, but I do think he's one of the best defensive players in the entire league now, and has so much to do with the the success, the the strident Grizzlies resurgence that is not talked about enough. It's it's a statement pick for me. I'm also punishing Draymond Green for Wiggins being on the theme. He's gone. He's out of here. Sorry. So, you, he, so, you, so you're taking Jaron over Draymond. So was, was maybe right. Draymond your next up? I would say this is probably Draymond's slot, but I, I both of these slots to me went to the, the best defensive front court player and the best defensive back court player. So is what, what I select. It's it's possible. I have a mental block about the <laughs> about my about the, the team I cheer for. It's possible that I have a thing. Well, this is a thing. I I've, I've actually enunciated this before. I have a weird thing when, I, when I'm naming my fictional all-stars because I don't get to actually vote for all-stars. But like when I'm naming these fictional all-stars, I have a thing where I prefer tiebreaker go to someone who's already been there. 
I like to keep mm-hmm. the club exclusive. And I that say like that sense. guy, I probably, that, like, I don't do that. That makes sense. You know, I never and, thought of it that way. And, yes. it, and there's sometimes we're also, it's not specifically just how they did in the first, whatever, 40 or 50 games of this season. I also do consider their entire body of work. I consider how famous they are. I even sprinkle in a little bit of how exciting they are uh, in an all-star setting. So like, it's not a perfect formula. I, I believe everyone should have their own, but when it comes to Jaron Jackson jr in my mind, I think I might have a mental block where I say, not an all-star. I just want to point at him. I get the feeling, but then I get it. You watch him miss a million shots around the hoop at being seven feet tall. Yeah. You watch him sometimes take silly fouls and stuff like that. But we watch every game to, 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 a, to you know, an, an incredible level. So we're seeing all the picadillos a player might have really how you should view. I think how you should view Jaron Jackson jr. At this point is like game altering defensive all-star. So <laughs> With, with yeah, here, upside. If I'm making, if I'm arguing for Jaron Jackson Jr., okay, this is what I'm telling myself. <laughs> right, Jaron Jackson Jr. averages more points per game than Rudy Gobert. He averages more blocks per game than Rudy Gobert, and the Grizzlies are what four and a half games ahead of the Jazz in the standings. Was ready to do this. So, like, that sounds like oh, well, then obviously, uh, and, Jaron Jackson Jr. And what makes Rudy Gobert an All Star to me is the fact that the Jazz are so diminished without Rudy Gobert. Yeah, that being the said. The Grizzlies are so diminished when Jaron just plays poorly. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't, uh, I, I think the arguments, the argument's easy for me. It's a homer pick. Uh, I, I threw it out there for the both of us. Keith. So I, I have a lot of trouble. You know, we obviously had the same five with uh, with Chris Paul, Devin Booker, uh, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, and Luka Doncic. Mm-hmm. I, for my, for let's call it a wild card, um, I took Donovan Mitchell. I think Donovan Mitchell uh, definitely would make it. I don't think it's close for me over him or. I mean, uh, Donovan Mitchell probably in 2021, if you just have those stats, probably deserved to start the all star the all star game. Um, yeah. I, I have kind of punished Jonathan Mitch, Donovan Mitchell for like looking at the team w- when he's leading it. Oh yeah, the the, um, the so like the recency bias is work is working hard against him. Uh, hurt, one, yeah, he's been he, he's a concussion right now. He's missed several games. But even when he was there, they were just losing every game when Gobert was not there, and that yeah. definitely took away the oh well. If it's just between if it's between a Gobertless Donovan Mitchell and a Dejounte Murray, I'm like oh well, Dejounte Murray looks better uh, playing with his cast uh, of misfits right. as opposed to Donovan Mitchell. But so, for whatever reason, I maybe I, I, I'm stuck in a rut rewarding a guy i mean he was awesome when gobert was playing and the jazz are still really good so for whatever reason and maybe it is just i'm not adventurous enough uh i have stuck with donovan mitchell for my last pick i'm i'm stuck like (laughs) i i i i lean here's where i lean i lean two guys who aren't going to play because of injuries so I feel like oh, okay, what's even yeah. the point? I took those guys out. Like, so I, I that, that's probably him. smart. So like, I'm, I honestly, I think I would go Paul George. Yes. He's not going to play. Yes. I but mean, then I do a replacement. Yeah. I do Draymond. He's not going to play. So I now forgot Draymond wasn't going to play. So that makes it oh, he's probably, I think it's, he's not expected to play. I'm um, sure he's going to pundit it up. They'll I mean, if he gets, if he gets named, he, he might do the thing where he suits mm-hmm. up and plays. You remember, did Dodgers do that last year? I believe like, so. Like Dodgers was injured. And then he's like, I'm going to play in the all-star game. And yeah. he played a few minutes, and then he missed games after the All-Star break. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, so, like, so now I'm stuck with, do I pick Jaron Jackson Jr.? Do I pick I mean, Anthony Davis? Because that stink. I don't want to pick no, Anthony Davis. No, Anthony Davis was terrible until, you know. No, Anthony Davis is not even close for me. Do I pick, how about Anthony Edwards? No, I love Anthony rules? Edwards. He rules. He rules, no. and he's got like, oh, I want to see. I want to see him in an all-star game. Brandon yeah, Ingram playing. has a better case than Anthony Edwards. Jaron Jackson Jr. is a boring all-star game player. Absolutely. Okay? Unless you like incredibly boring. Yeah, yeah, no, he's an incredibly boring all-star. He's going to try to do a funny dunk, and it's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> like, I don't, maybe that shouldn't <laughs> weigh in. He'll miss a few oops. Yeah, it's yeah, Rudy, like, yeah, Rudy Gobert. It's just he's Rudy not Gobert, a good, yeah. yeah, yeah, like Rudy Gobert. Honestly, there's, there's, there's a guy in the Eastern Conference I'm about to punish. Uh, for being a boring player. Um, okay, I get it. I mean, DeAndre so, Ayton deserves it over those guys, I think. 
No, get on my face, DeAndre Aiden. You've been ruined by Bismack Biombo and Jalen Smith. Oh, stats. good point. Good point. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I, I think Brandon Ingram definitely a better case than the guy than, than the guys. You I like I like Anthony Edwards because they're, they're they're much higher in the standings and he's more exhilarating. It's not a basketball stat, but Anthony Edwards is more exhilarating. I, I mean, I love than Brandon Edwards. Ingram. I, I, I love think the Timberwolves. So I'm ready to put Patrick Beverly on the team. <laughs> Man. He's so good. All right, I'm officially I'm officially naming Paul George as my twelfth. That's but I'm, fine. But I'm I thought, injury. I am injury replacing him with Jared yeah. Jackson Jr. Cheers. Woo! I mean, I, I guess that that should be my official as well because I kind of thought Paul George could be on it because he definitely deserves it. You know. I mean, I don't. But talk about a boring player to put in an all. Well, like game, the the, the games the games played thing is not that big of a difference. It's just knowing he's out. He's no, hey, knowing he's going and to people, miss. And pe- a hey, people get mad at us. Forward. People get mad at us. Just put it this way. In like two years, uh, Jaron Jackson will be known as like a seven foot version of Paul George anyway. So it all, it all works out. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if there's people that I, I've really actually snubbed in the West. Like, I, I'm sorry, like Shea, he's not playing. I'm not even considering him. Uh, I, yeah, I was going to put him like, on. I don't think so. Lillard? Um, no. I mean, it's weird because if you thought Mike Conley deserved to be on it last year, then he deserves to be on it this year as far as like and stats you, and, and stuff and, go. And you know I didn't. Yeah, that's um, right. Um, like, so maybe I should put DeJounte Murray on. Maybe I should be less of a homer. But like the Grizzlies uh, are the three seed. Yeah. And the Spurs are, what are they, 11th? I can't. They're like a game out of the play-in or game in the play-in. Oh, no, I'm overlooking one big guy. 18, 18 points, 11 rebounds, no 12 rebounds per game. That's Jonas Valanciunas. <laughs> I thought you were gonna make a main joke. <laughs> they got no. I mean, honestly, I, looking at this, I, I'm I'm very comfortable. Uh, I feel like we covered it. Like yeah, covered I, I think I think Paul George and Draymond more deserving. But if we're talking about third alternates, yes, sir, Jaron Jackson Jr. Come on I, down. I think Jaron uh, Jackson Jr. has as good a case as Draymond. For the collect your reason. prize. Apologies to to Dejounte Murray, but good news, he already made uh, your ballot. Let's move to the Eastern Conference. The Eastern Conference starters. It's impossible. Um, well, Eastern Conference starters are Demar Derozan, Trey Young in the backcourt, Kevin Durant, who we're gonna have to replace, John. Mm. Uh, Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and uh, Joel Embiid. All right. So in the in the East, let's see. Well, same system. Same let's system. Go the, let's go with the easy. I ones assume first. you have you have James Harden. Correct. Okay. By the way, perfect. Like how it ended. This is exactly a James Harden All Star Reserve year. What do you mean? He's, st- he's still awesome. Slam dunk All Star. Maybe his worst year in I don't know how long. It's still illustrative that James Harden is an All Star player. Belongs on the team. No question. Yeah. Asked. All right. So. You have James Harden. I have James Harden. I assume we both have Jimmy Butler. Yes. Okay. And then it might get weird. <laughs> so it, th- at this point, it gets very, very strange for me. Yeah. I, I'm at a loss to separate these guys. Actually, no, I think there's one more. There's one more who I think is clearly in. Um, okay. Zach Levine. You have yes. Zach Levine. Okay. So, so I think there might be one more that's clearly in. Who's your, so who's your next clearly in? Fred Van Vliet. I have Fred Van Vliet among a, uh, a I was going to say posse, but I don't want to get Phil Jackson canceled. I was going to say a posse, <laughs> uh, among a posse of five um, who I'm considering for like three spots. Um, Party five, Nev Campbell. So we both have Harden. We both have Jimmy Butler. We both have Levine. And you have Fred Van Vliet. I'm not yeah. sure yet. To me, it's a Van Vliet or Siakam decision, and I chose Van Vliet. Okay. Who's your, I think uh, Siakam... Siakam, as he gets healthy, is like a defensive monster and very exemplary of what they are doing in Toronto. Whereas Van Vliet is like the one guy who isn't like the rest of the Raptors, but still. So it's, a pure, ahead, it's a pure numbers thing. For I'll go Van ahead Vliet. and tell you, I have I have taken Siakam. And Siakam. And, and that's why I, Van, Van Vliet I think you only get one, though. Um, uh, Van Vliet's on a little bit of a slump. Yeah. Like he's finally come down a bit. We did this two weeks ago. We we're talking about all stars. I was saying, I, think, I was, I think I like your Van Vliet and Garland. I think I like your pick better, but the fact that Siakam had that labrum tear and was out for so long, that's where like Van Siakam's Vliet's crushing it right now. The Raptors are absolutely it. terrifying right now. Yeah. I asked Chuck to give me some information about the Raptors and he just wept. He just couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't put together words. Um, they're just unleashing. So Gary Trent Jr., by the way, who's not on my team, but uh, has scored over 30 points in five consecutive games. What is it going when 
with Van Vliet and Gary Trent Jr. are going off. And then you have those monsters of Siakam, Ananobi, and Barnes. That team is terrifying. Yeah, it's not fair when, like, their worst rangy player is averaging 31 points a game over his last four <laughs> games. It's not fair. All right, so <laughs> – so I. All right, so you, you have who's another one of, you, of your reserves? I've already I've already reviewed um, my Seahawks. We probably cool. both have Jason Tatum. Yeah, I didn't feel good about it. I felt to me boring. that's like a hardened situation where it's like this guy should be an All Star starter every year. He's having a down year, so he's a reserve. And even with the if if they are a little bit loose about positions coming up with forwards, like I can't mm-hmm. pretend that like Levine's a forward. I can't pretend. That hardens a forward. Um, Fred Van Vliet, I can't pretend is a forward, even though it's block a lot of shots, even if they're all they are all the swipe down variety. Um, yeah, I I got Tatum. So you, you and I both have a Tatum. That makes sense. Um, who's another one of your guys? Um, so we've done, I think the only one we haven't said is for me is Lamello, and then there's one more. Ooh. Lamello. I've got Lamello. I <clears throat> Lamelo is is with that group for me. He's with that group for me with, with Fred Van Vliet. So I have you down as having Harden and Levine, and then Jimmy Butler and Jason Tatum, Fred Van Vliet and Lamelo. You kind of need to give me a, a forward or center. I feel like it needs to be a front court guy. Is that how you, you have a front court guy coming up, or you have somebody else? Evan Mobley. So you got Evan Mobley. Yes. Let's talk about this. Right. I, I look around and I see what the other pundits are doing. I I see who. The other TV people are putting on. Am I supposed other... to know? No, no, no. I'm saying <laughs> all, all, you're not supposed to know. I, okay. I've been I, like, I have no idea. I started looking at what other people were doing. Yeah, um, I was cheating off other people's homework and everyone is putting in Jared out. Jared Allen is the third most deserving player on that team. So that's that's kind of where my thought process is. I'm not a Cavaliers expert and maybe I should have reached out to like the chase down guys and gotten Cavaliers experts. I feel like that team's hierarchy of needs. Like they actually have to have Darius Garland. If Darius Garland's not there, they have maybe nothing. I think I Evan Mobley s- is the best of the three. I felt sick leaving Garland off. And now that we're doing a replacement, I think we should talk about him. But uh, I, I mean, I, I, when I watch the Cavs and they're one of my favorite teams to watch this year, because of the insane style that they play, which only works because of Evan Mobley, really, by the way. I think Evan Mobley is very clearly the best player on the Cavs team. And this is a team that had Darius Garland and Jared Allen last year and was incredibly terrible. And now they've added this, like, you know, Larry Bird worst to first type scenario. This is easy. So that's that, easy. that's kind of how I think about it as well. Yeah. I, I think about it very similarly. If this team didn't have Evan Mobley, I think they're bad again. I yeah. think I'm also, assigning him also like magical powers. I'm giving him like he has this. You aura should. He's unbelievable. That has made this team good. Uh, I think he's like one of the 20 best players in the NBA already. Yeah, I think that might be true. He also like, plays more minutes. If you want to just get real basic about it, he plays more minutes than, than Allen and, and Garland. If the likely MVP isn't already starting for the East. He starts for my team. If Joel oh, doesn't wow. exist, he starts for my, like I'm very high on my own. So you've here. actually, you've actually empowered me. Cause I felt like it was controversial. I was basically leaving off Jared Allen. So there, there is an argument that the Cavaliers team is much better because of like Darius Garland year three leap, similar to John Morant. He's taken a, a big year three leap. I mean, Jared Allen, whatever, 17 and 11 on 70% field goals is great. Yeah. Very, very good. But I also assign so much of their success to just like Evan Mobley is just the guy. He's just the one. He, um, he, he allows them to play the style of basketball that they play. So let's so so your final reserves. I, I like your team a lot. Uh, you got James Harden. You got Zach Levine. Then Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, Evan Mobley, and then Fred Van Vliet and Lamella Ball. Right. Your your big snubs. Um, the hardest like, person for me to leave off was Drew Holiday. Yeah, like Drew Holiday. I'm um, sorry. I don't think Chris Middleton is an all star anymore. I'm so yeah, sorry. That's fair. It's no, that's so fair. Hard. I don't I don't even have him on my on my list. So I think I have, Siakam was hard. Uh, oh, Garland was hard, man. So Garland, so here's what I have loosely. Right. Um you know, Harden, Levine, Butler, Tatum, and then I have Siakam as my next forward. I think that, I actually think that's a better selection than Fred VanVleet. I think I got I got sucked in by just an incredibly hot shooting 
I think I bet I regret this selection. So now, so now I have to, I have a, technically two wild cards plus a Durant replacement. We haven't even done your Durant replacement, so you still I get one more. Yeah, okay. Um, I have. I'm considering for these two spots. I'm considering Fred Van Vliet, Drew Holiday, Lamelo Ball, and Darius Garland. But okay. I can only pick two of those. I, I mean, this is apologies to Jared Allen. This, oh, oh, or honestly, or I could I can include uh, these are wild cards, so I could include Jared Allen. I could include Evan Mobley here. I'm so mad because I came I came to this podcast ready to yell at you about you taking Bradley Beal or Jalen Brown and nothing, neither of those things. Yeah, no, like Jalen Brown's not close to this list. Bam Adebayo's not close to this list. Oh, uh, no. Jalen Brown, no. My guy Chris Middleton, no. Yeah, I was leaning Lamelo because of the All Star Game needs Lamelo Ball. This is a guy who could easily be all-star game MVP multiple times in his career just because he's awesome at playing a very exciting brand of basketball, playmaker. Like So like, there's some of that. Just the pizzazz and flair he plays with makes me want to put him in. Look, and also the Hornets are in the playoff picture. Also, they do you, don't, you don't even need that argument this year, Keith. I mean, he's averaging 27 and 7. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, know. I know. You don't even need it. So forget about it. So... I thought then, it was pretty. I thought well, it was so pretty then easy. I start thinking: Do the do the Cavs? If I live off Garland, I have no Cavs, so I have to do a Cav here. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a Cavs. That'd be insane tonight. It's but it's like they all cancel each other out. It's like three. Nah, it's like it's, it's like three one. actors all getting nominated for best supporting actor in the same category, and they kill themselves in the vote. Just pick the best one. I'm a, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Darius Garland and. Maybe just live in my wrongness. I feel empowered that you picked Mobley, and I don't want to copy your Mobley. Um, so oh I, man! So I, I'll just go with that. And I, mean, I, feel, I feel like it, I feel like it feels almost. I feel like we'll look back at this and feel like absurd to not have Evan Mobley. I and I and, and yeah. you know like and and like being on the Rising Stars challenge doesn't do it for me. Like I, I don't get. There's like a weird thing I feel like where it's like, oh, he's in the Rising Stars game. Forget it. And then, well, you know, well, so I'm going to name, but here's the thing. We all now get to name a replacement for Kevin Durant if we want. Yeah, I, I, I you know, it, to me, it's between Drew and Garland, I guess. I really like Darius Garland. But Drew Holiday is really awesome, too. I, you know what? I'll go. I'll go Darius Garland. All right. So my lineup is very guard heavy. Yeah, me too. So now I guess I get I I have the choice of putting in a, a, a Evan Mobley, but it feels weird to put him in over like even like a Bam out of bio. Like geez, I kind of have to do a front court guy. I my, I guess Siakam should be my replacement, maybe. Yeah. But I don't want to kick Van Vliet off. I feel I mean I, I, I do feel like even more than Jaron Jackson Jr., Fred Van Vliet is my like, oh, I'm gonna regret this pick. Like I will say doing these Eastern Conference ones, the only Art. ones the only ones I feel very comfortable with mm -hmm. is Harden, Levine, and Jimmy Butler. And okay. then I th and then I think there's like I don't know, then there's like I, nine. I, I mean Tatum's even though he's had such struggles with inefficiency and the Celtics do suck, Tatum is just to me is undeniable now. Yeah, I'm like punishing Tatum for that weird your team's underperforming, and maybe that's wrong. I, I don't think I don't think you can do that when it comes to all stars. Like once you um yeah, do you know what I mean? Like once no, you know, once you've gotten to a certain level, like if, if the Celtics were really good right now at the near the close top of the standings, he'd be an MVP candidate. Yeah, and I and it's hard for me to you know I, well, I know I that's mean, a if, lot of what if, what about is if the Wizards were top two, Brad Beal might be an MVP candidate. No, <laughs> no, it'd be I mean, all Genuity and Kuzma. Never. Brad Beal's <laughs> so bad. Brad Beal's Brad Beal's numbers this year are not good either. No, I, it feels good. Like I know I know he's like learned to pass all of a sudden, but like. His, like his scoring is gone. His efficiency is gone. I'm, ex I'm enjoying his bread. Bill, I think, uh, yeah. What is, what is, what is the opposite of a renaissance? McConaissance? McConaughey? Yeah, the the McConaissance. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I struggle with my last spot for a replacement between Fred Van Vliet, Drew Holiday. They're so close. Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. It's, uh, I, you know what? Maybe I, I'm going to save on the airfare and I'm also, I'm going to name Evan Mobley. Uh, is yes. a is a hometown. I think that's the, the right move. Cavalier. Like you're protecting yourself from doing something historically stupid. Oh yeah. Well, all right. So to wrap this up, uh, in the Western Conference, you had Chris Paul, 
Devin Booker, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, Luka Doncic, DeJounte Murray, and Jaron Jackson Jr. I had Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, Luka Doncic, Donovan Mitchell, and Jaron Jackson Jr. Both apologies to Paul George and Rudy and uh, Draymond Green for not being available. In the East, your reserves, you had James Harden, Zach Levine, Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, uh, Evan Mobley, Fred Vivit, Lamelo, and then replacement injury guy. You said Siakam for Durant, and then oh I yeah, had, I gotta do that because yeah, I don't have enough front court. Guys. And then uh, I also had Harden, Levine, Butler. I took Siakam and Tatum. Lamello, Am I allowed since Darius I just Garland. since I've got Siakam coming on? Can I take Van Vliet off? The Raptors shouldn't get two. Well, that's how you get it. So if you take Van Vliet off, who you still get another person now? Are you putting Drew Holiday on now? I'll put Garland on now. Well, now you got the Cavs having two. That, that's, that's okay. That's that's fine. how I feel. It's fine. It's fine. But the best Cav should be on the team. I feel weird about Mowgli. having the Raptors having two and like leaving off Drew Holiday for that reason. You know that that's where I do get kind of. I guess I do. Get I'll, I'll do. Dr- I'll standings. do Drew. I'll do Drew over Garland. I think the I think the Bucks deserve it more than the Cavs. Well, I will say if, if you want to watch Jaron Jackson Jr. play, you got to head on down to the FedEx Forum. <laughs> Go see the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, I'm gonna fill in this later. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, anyway, John, I feel like we did a great job. Uh, I don't think you could argue with our selections, and I do uh, look forward to finding out what they actually are and then all the brouhaha that will erupt when they are announced on Thursday night. Anyway, I will talk to you uh, this weekend. Everybody else out there, thanks for listening. Hope you have a good one. You guys are the best. Thanks for listening, and remember, breakfast is the most important thing. Shante Murray. All right, I got to go. Thanks, man. See you, bud.